ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to bosch limited 2q fi 2324 post sale conference call hosted by bnk securities from bosch management we have with us today mr guru prasad mudalapur managing director and chief technology officer mr n sandeep joint managing director and ms karin gilks chief financial officer at this point all participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the management presentation and opening remarks over to you sir thank you ajayraj uh, uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, thanks for being a uh, part of this call today i'll start with a brief uh, on the macroeconomic uh, policy followed by an automotive uh, market update and then walk you through our uh, financials finally i'll end with uh, the highlights of the quarter uh, affecting our uh, business as per recent uh, imf uh, report uh, the global economy is expected to grow at uh, 3% in uh, 2023 down from uh, 3.5% in 2022 and advanced economies to grow by 1.5% in 23 uh, from 2.7% uh, in uh, 22 with this backdrop indian economy is doing well and expected to grow between 6 to 6.5% in uh, financial year 23 24 more importantly our in inflation remains controlled and uh, the financial sector is uh, resilient next slide please uh, q2 fy24 represented a mixed uh, picture uh, mixed performance with uh, positive year on year uh, growth in the passenger uh, vehicle uh, three wheeler and uh, commercial vehicle segments while two wheeler and tractor segments uh, experienced a decline despite a decrease in two wheeler volumes there are signs of recovery in both domestic and uh, export markets inventory build up ahead of the festival season has supported uh, volume performance in uh, q2 fy24 uh, sports ut utility vehicle uh, segment uh, maintained strong dispatches due to efficient uh, order book execution and uh, supply chain uh, improvements however there was a moderation in uh, demand for uh, lower end uh, passenger cars among all segments uh, medium and heavy commercial vehicles are in a favorable uh, position driven by demand better demand in uh, underlying industries and uh, healthy fleet utilization uh, levels light commercial vehicle volumes saw a marginal growth attributed to a high base while tractor volumes declined due to erratic uh, monsoons in uh, key regions and a high base uh, from the previous year three wheeler volumes show positive growth indicating a return to full normalcy in uh, demand looking at uh, year on year uh, production volumes there was approximately 19% uh, growth for uh, medium heavy commercial vehicles 6% for pv 16% for three wheelers 5% for uh, lcv however uh, two wheeler volumes declined by uh, 1% year on year and tractor volumes saw a significant drop of 10% uh, uh, year on year in uh, second quarter of uh, 24 uh, let's look at the automotive outlook for 23 and uh, 24 next slide please in this slide uh, we have illustrated the market's trajectory from the peaks of uh, 2018 through the challenges posed by covid to the uh, subsequent uh, recovery year to date uh, volumes indicate a notable shift with uh, most segments surpassing their previous peaks and achieving uh, record levels pc lcv tractor segments are expected to particularly excel surpassing the pre previous uh, peak uh, sales while other segments uh, are uh, steadily recovering demonstrating positive quarter on quarter growth looking ahead to 2024 the election year factor and historical trends suggest restrained growth in the automotive uh, industry the erratic uh, monsoon of 23 may have uh, some impact on the rural uh, sentiment nevertheless the underlying economic conditions remain robust and the overarching india growth narrative remains uh, unchanged we anticipate uh, for the upcoming year a mod moderate uh, growth trajectory attributed to the election year dynamics a high baseline set in the current year and uh, the impact of uh, erratic uh, rainfall patterns uh, however uh, the global headwinds to be monitored uh, closely let's look at how the company has performed in the july to september uh, 23 quarter compared to the july 
to September 22 amidst uh, the above mentioned uh, factors. Next slide, please. Sector wise uh, sales, uh, the mobility solutions sector now. Mobility sales uh, have grown by 11.7% in Q2 FI24 as compared to Q2 FI23. 12.3% uh, growth in uh, product sales of powertrain solutions is driven majorly due to growth in uh, HCV and uh, passenger car segments and due to increase in content per vehicle mainly in uh, exhaust gas treatment uh, components. Automotive aftermarket uh, business has grown by 10.2% quarter on quarter, mainly due to increase in demand for spark plugs and higher uh, sale of lubricants. Uh, Two-wheeler business sales have also increased by 18.6% quarter on quarter due to higher sales uh, for fuel injectors driven by improvement in uh, the overall semiconductor supplies as compared to previous quarter. Now, beyond mobility solutions, uh, sales have grown by 9.9% in uh, Q2 FI24 as compared to Q2 FI23. Consumer goods business comprising of power tools segment has increased by 10.4% quarter on quarter, mainly due to higher demand for blue tools. Building technologies grew by 3.9%, uh, mainly on account of higher number of orders for installation of uh, security systems. Uh, the profitability statement. The overall revenue from operations for July to September 2023 stood at uh, 41,301 million INR which is an increase of 12.8% as compared to the corresponding period of previous year, mainly driven by growth in product sales by 11.5%. Mobility solutions grew by 11.7%, while sales from business beyond mobility solutions increased by 9.9%. Income from services mainly comprising of engineering and application services provided to Indian OEMs and also to Bosch uh, Germany. Service income recognized as uh, recognized during the quarter was mainly towards completion of uh, BS6 stage 2 projects for the OEMs. Other income, operating income, mainly includes income from sale, lease rentals, export incentives, and miscellaneous income. In the quarter, in the current quarter, the increase is mainly on account of higher lease rentals for leasing out of property in uh, the Adugodi premises and uh, incentive received from the government of Maharashtra uh, under the mega project uh, scheme. The material cost as a percentage of total revenue from operations is at 66.8% in July to September 23, as compared to 64.9% in July, September uh, 2022. However, the material cost as a percentage of net sales uh, that is excluding income from services and other operating income, is at 70.1% in uh, July-September 2023, as compared to 67.3% in July-September 2022. The increase is mainly on account of uh, uh, mixed impact, the higher share of traded goods, adverse forex uh, impact on imported material, and uh, the previous year had certain one-time credits, that is, uh, provisions written back, uh, which were no longer required. Employee cost. Employee cost for uh, July to September 2023 is 3,355 million INR, as compared to 2,751 million INR in uh, July to September 2022. Increase is mainly on account of year-on-year -year salary increases. Also, previous year had certain one-time uh, credits. Other expenses stood at uh, 5,449 million INR, 13.2% of total revenue, in July to September 2023, as compared to 5,781 million INR, 15.8% of total revenue, in July to September 2022. The current quarter expenditure has decreased mainly on account of the following. Lower spending on new businesses on account of uh, sale of project house mobility solutions uh, business, lower one-time technical access fee in current quarter for localization of ECUs and uh, common rail, common rail uh, injectors. Uh, depreciation for the current quarter is at 
13 million INR, 2.5% of the revenue, as compared to 919 million INR, which was 2.5% of the total revenue in July to September 2022. Increase in depreciation in current quarter is on account of additions during the year, mainly in buildings and uh, plant and machinery. Operating profit. Uh, with this, the operating profit stood at uh, 3,900 million INR in July, September 2023, as compared to 3,392 million INR uh, in July, September 2022, which is an increase of 15%. Other income uh, primarily comprises of interest on fixed deposits, intercompany loans, change in market value of uh, mutual funds. Uh, the other income has increased from uh, 1497 million INR in July, September 2022 to 1542 million INR in uh, July, September 2023, mainly on account of increase in interest income. Uh, PVT and PAT, for the quarter ending July, September 23, your company posted their profit before tax, before exceptional item of 5,320 million INR as compared to 4,870 million INR in uh, July, September 2022. As a percentage of total sales from uh, operations, uh, the profit before tax, before exceptional items, stood at 12.9% of total revenue in the current quarter. Profit before tax, after exceptional items, stood at 13,170 million INR in July, September 23 as compared to 4,870 million INR in July, September 22. Uh, as a percentage of total revenue from operations, profit before tax after exceptional item stood at 31.9% of total revenue in the current quarter. Uh, profit after tax for the quarter ended September 23 stood at 9,989 million INR which is 24.2% of total revenue from operations. Profit after tax in uh, July, September 22 was 3,724 million INR, which is 10.2% of total revenue from operations. The profit after tax for the current quarter includes gain on sale of our, pro of our project house mobility solutions business, uh, amounting to 6,054 million INR net of tax. On the technology front, next slide, please. On the technology front, this quarter we commenced uh, on-road trials following the development of our hydrogen ice engine uh, project and uh, post receiving permissions from the Ministry of uh, Road Transport and uh, Highways. Engine calibration activities to meet the BS6 stage 2 uh, norms have begun. Trials are primarily taking place uh, in on Bangalore roads and uh, TAL, which is the Hosu Road airstrip. Uh, we will keep you updated on any new developments on this uh, topic. Next slide, please. We also wanted to give you an update on uh, the work Bosch Limited has been doing around CSR. Since April 2023, a total of 8,000 plus volunteer hours were completed uh, involving 900 volunteers, of which 650 are from Bosch and 250 were from uh, non-Bosch uh, uh, volunteers. For the second quarter alone, we have achieved 2,750 plus hours comprising of over 40 activities. The activities included tree plantation, uh, lake rejuvenation, animal welfare, uh, world youth skill day, environmental projects, mentoring programs, school painting, medical facility enhancement and assistance, uh, and so on. By December 23, we will cross 100 plus activities across all location, uh, locations. The Bosch uh, leadership team also took part in many of these activities. Next slide, please. Thank you all uh, for your contribution and for listening patiently uh, through the call. We will now address uh, your queries. Thanks again and uh, open for your questions. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. We shall now begin the question and answer session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at present, you are all in the listen only mode. For participants who wish to ask a question, I request you to please raise your virtual hand. I shall be able to see your raised virtual hand and we will invite you in turn. 
Alternatively, uh, participants can also type in their questions in the chat box. Please address your questions to all participants. Uh, the, the first question is from Pramod Kumar. Uh, uh, please unmute well and ask your question. date on the uh, electric vehicle uh, business in India, especially on the two-wheeler side, where we are seeing the market is kind of bounced back uh, pretty well after the subsidy cut. And we are seeing more product introduction by OEMs uh, and everyone's talking about ramping up volumes. So if you can just share uh, any update there in terms of how we are doing in terms of uh, the, the, the category market share on electrification and how does it compare versus our ICE portfolio. If you can just help us understand that first, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, my uh, AMD uh, Sandeep will take this up. Well, uh, on the electrification front, I think your observation is right that uh, post uh, subsidy adjustments and uh, and changes, uh, the two wheeler demand has kind of uh, recovered. Um, on the passenger cars, we see uh, we see a consistent. Uh, demand of uh, of the EV EV cars. Um, so we will continue to focus on our portfolio engagement in both these segments, and uh, we will we will watch how the market goes uh, before we can um, get into more specifics on portfolio enlargement. Pramod, are you in line? I think he has uh, dropped out, I think. Uh, uh, next question is from Gokul Makeshwari. Uh, please, uh, I have an un unmute and ask for questions. First margins, uh, uh, well, you mentioned the fact that uh, there has been deterioration on account of uh, inferior mix. Uh, but we've had a fairly benign uh, cost environment with respect to uh, the commodity prices. And uh, we are primarily trading, which traded percentage has gone up dramatically over the last few years. So um, not for the shorter term, but more, where do you see the margins coming back in terms of your localization program and trying to uh, improve your gross margin profile because it's like nearly 10 percentages point lower than your longer term averages. So if you can just give a sort of a path in terms of how do we recoup our prior gross margins. Yeah. Okay, Kevin speaking. Um, yes, the gross margin, um, as uh, already mentioned by my uh, colleague Guru, um, we see uh, currently, and as you are already rightly mentioned, an increase in the share of the traded goods. This is uh, partially uh, coming out of the uh, what we see the change in the content of the vehicles, especially also in the heavy commercial vehicles. This is the exhaust gas treatment. Uh, good news in the uh, heavy commercial vehicles we have last year, uh, localize the injector. We are going currently ahead with the child part of this injector as a very important step. And um, in the future, um, we are currently also planning or making the further steps in the direction of the exhaust gas treatment. Um, we have another effect uh, which we see, and this is a change from, uh, from the conventional uh, um, uh, combustion engine to the common rail combustion engine, there we have a general higher share uh, in the material of the total costs in the common rail systems. This is uh, as a, a based on the technology, let's say, so a lower value add share. And also in the common rail, um, we have picked up already uh, from below the 50% now, this year we will end up at about 68% localization of the components, and we will go ahead to come up to a decent uh, uh, localization share also in the common rail systems. Of course, all these activities 
will support uh, our cross margin in the future. And this is one of the priority topics is uh, localization of finished goods, localization of child parts, and localization of components here in India. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so, should I assume that the uh, the gross margin improvements is uh, uh, given that the localization benefits are coming and coming sooner? Uh, the improvements in the gross margin should be reflective in more in the next forthcoming quarters uh, rather than forthcoming years, uh, given that we've already made some progress over here. Yeah, so um, this is for sure when we talk about a localization, then this is not in the next quarters. So we are going ahead, but, uh, you know, uh, doing a localization with all the quality releases, with all the cross-checks, with the customers' releases, etc. And this is uh, also quite complex technologies, especially in the common rail and also in the exhaust gas treatment, so we are talking about a midterm. Okay. Um, would you be able to quantify the capex uh, budget for FI twenty four and twenty five? Um, for the for the current uh, for the for the next year, we are uh, estimating a, a capex of three point five uh, billion. And for the year twenty five, we are currently in the middle of the midterm planning. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gokul. Uh, next, uh, uh, Mr. Jinesh, you can unmute and ask your question. Question uh, is uh, on the localization itself. So you talked about uh, localizing EGT uh, components as well. So that will be done through a uh, Bosch uh, entity or it could be done at the vendor's level? And what I'm trying to understand is... Uh, uh, would that lead to lower share of traded goods, uh, or particularly on the AGT side? Yes. Yes. The answer to both is yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, Bosch should be localizing AGT components. Got it. And secondly, uh, you alluded to the fact that uh, we've already reached 68% localization for common rail components. Uh, this, uh, we are looking to take it to up to 100% or certain components will still be imported. 100% we will not reach. We even have in the conventional, and please do not underestimate a localization, uh, even in, in our lovely A-pump, which is for decades already here in India, we are at 95%. So the 100% we will not reach, but um, we will uh, try to do everything to localize as much as possible here in India. But certain things, also volume-wise, uh, make sense to to import. I'm sure that's uh, highly appreciated. And uh, in this quarter, we saw almost 19% growth for our two-wheeler segment uh, business. Uh, if I look at the underlying industry, production grew sub to uh, production impact declined sub two percent. So, what led to such a strong growth for Bosch uh, in a, a weaker industry growth? Well, I uh, this is Sandeep speaking. I, I think uh, out of the total growth or degrowth of the two wheel segment. We need to segment we need to, you know, segment the different um, categories. Um, there is a higher distress in the commuter segment where our play is rather low. Uh, but in the premium part of the uh, of the two wheelers, uh, the market has done better and so have to. that explains the reason why there is a disconnect between our growth and the industry growth numbers. Got it, got it. Uh, a few more questions, but I'll fall back into you. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Jinesh. Uh, Pramod Kumar has again joined us. Pramod Kumar, you can unmute and ask your question. For the opportunity again. And uh, can you please provide us an update on the PLI scheme? Uh, if there's any progress which has been achieved there, and if yes, what kind of components are we uh, are we getting the approval from the government, and when can we expect the benefits of the same kind of uh, kicking in? And uh, as uh, 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 as it normally happens with such programs or such benefits, uh, will you be also sharing some of these benefits with your uh, with your customers, or uh, would you expect the benefits to be largely retained at the Bosch end? 
So if you can just help us understand the PLL bit, uh, uh, the PLI bit uh, 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 more in detail, that would be really helpful. Yeah, so I'll not get into every specific part of your question, but I'll give you a general answer on uh, PLI. Yes, we are, uh, uh, we have applied and qualified for PLI. Uh, there's a lot of echo. Could you please mute? Uh, yeah, sorry. I'll unmute, my, yeah, I'll unmute myself, but the problem is I can't unmute again if I have a follow up. So I'll request okay. there. Yeah, you can stay online. Then it's okay. Yeah. Let's continue. So. Uh, in general, we have qualified for uh, PLI uh, uh, on, uh, at uh, Bosch Limited. We, uh, we are planning to bring in lots of uh, uh, local manufacturing thanks to the PLI benefit that uh, uh, occurs uh, uh, as a consequence. We will, of course, uh, as uh, uh, quarters go by, we will keep you updated on what has been the benefit of this which uh, product categories, which segments, and uh, how uh, this is going to be dealt with. In general, we intend to keep the benefits uh, with us and uh, also share uh, uh, where uh, required with the customers, but uh, this is not uh, totally finalized as of now, and we will update you as we move forward. Uh, thanks, Pramod Kumar. Next, we'll go to the next to Pramod. Pramod Amte can unmute and ask your question. So the first question is with regard to the uh, royalty which you said you have paid lesser for ECU and uh, the injector localization. Can you specify uh, I don't get you in the other expenses? Royalty. The question is on royalty. You have called out that in the slide saying that your other expenses are lower because of some localization program on the ECU end. Injectors. Uh, okay, so you are referring to the PNL to the other expenses, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Uh, okay, got it. So, um, so we have uh, different effects in the other expenses. Um, one effect is we had a sales of business of the, uh, of the mobility platform and therefore we have a reduction in the spending for this, uh, uh, uh project, let's say. This is which we see now in this quarter. Then we had in this quarter the reduction in the one-time cost of technical access fees. This is, let's say, depending on localization, depending on the product mix we have, we have these technical fees. But this is, if we compare it to the last quarter, we see here a reduction. Then we had, um, as uh, we have a real cost saving measures, that means this is a performance program. Also we have that we are looking frequently in our cost, uh, in, in our cost categories. And we are also making here real cost progress. And the fourth is that we also see a reduction due to a better fixed cost absorption. Uh, if we compare it, to the past that um, we under proportional throw in our variable costs if we are looking or in our fixed cost, sorry, under proportional to the growth in our revenues. Sure, thanks. And the second question is with regard to a sale of business. Uh, what implication it will have on your sales and EBITDA because of this uh, sale of business? This has been explained um, in the past on uh, what was the rationale and uh, why we sold it. Um, uh, you want to comment on the one-time effect uh, that has come in? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but perhaps we have to explain first the top and the bottom line. So this was actually in the last two to three years where we uh, explored the mobility platform here in India and we made investments via the other expenses into these platforms. Do we, do we now see a, a, a huge effect in the top line means in the revenues? No, we're selling the business. In the, uh, in the, in the uh, bottom line, we see it in this quarter under um, the, uh, um, under the uh, one-time expense or exceptional items where we see the sale of the business um, 
below the profit before tax. So that's the Hinduja uh, entity which you sold, right? The energy. No, that's no. the project house mobility solutions uh, our business. Okay. okay, sure. Thanks and all the best. Uh, thanks, Pramod. Uh, Pramod Kumar, I have unmuted our line again. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, again, uh, follow up on the commercial vehicles, I said, because we're getting different views here. Uh, some of uh, the larger peers on the on the component supply chain side have started to call out a peak for the industry now. And uh, some of the OEMs have also started to talk about a flattish trend emerging from Port U. So in that context, given that you have exposure to all of them and across all uh, listed, unlisted, and across tonnage, uh, what are your thoughts on the commercial vehicle space uh, uh, as, as, as we as we go forward from here? I think of the commercial vehicle, uh, there was this peak which we saw the industry getting to in 2018. Uh, and then subsequently, we have had uh, a continuous downturn uh, due to several factors which have been explained in the earlier uh, discussions as well. But now we see a turnaround, albeit in a very low base. Um, it is a slow recovery, um, and we have to basically keep a watch on um, the effect on larger investments which will happen in the infrastructure space. So we'll keep a close watch on this uh, industry. Yes, you're indeed right that our exposure to this industry is uh, is very sensitive and high. So we'll keep a very close watch on it. So at the moment, we see uh, we see a, 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 a slow but sustained recovery. It's uh, good to understand that there are some uh, structural changes in the logistics sector in terms of how India moves goods. And uh, as a consequence, for example, uh, there is now fast tag, there are better uh, roads, better infrastructure, and of course, a uh, uh, good amount of cargo is now moved on uh, railways. Uh, but at the same time, there are higher uh, tonnage uh, trucks playing on uh, Indian roads, unlike in the past. So there are many changes that are happening all at once. And uh, so uh, my colleague already explained that uh, we'll keep a very close watch on how the market develops over the coming years. Our own content for vehicle in this category is also increasing. So we have to bring in multiple factors uh, in, and we will see how the market develops uh, going forward. Thanks, Pramod. Uh, next is Mr. Viraj. Please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, yeah. I just got three specific queries. First is on the contribution margin. You know, so if I compare sequentially, right, uh, the share of traded goods was, say, somewhere around 67% is now close to around 65%. And if I look at the environment which we are in, in terms of the raw material, it's on, it's one of the most benign environment. And so, I mean, I'm still not able to understand the mix part or is it that other than the mix, uh, in the past, we used to be quite strong in terms of the contracts, in terms of the RM recovery or FX cost recovery. So uh, is it that, you know, post BS6, you know, the terms of the trade are no longer that uh, strong, you know, as what it used to be in a pre-BS6 environment? Just trying to understand, you know, on the contribution part. So that is one. Uh, second is on the CapEx, you know. Uh, so at the AGM also, we talked about upwards of, 400 to 600 crores kind of a capex, and that was including PLI. But if I look at the first half, uh, we have just done a capex of say 105 crores. Uh, so, you know, how should we understand the capex? If I have to understand in the sense of the localization which we are trying to achieve. So, if I have to look at next say three or four years, uh, what is the quantum of capex we would have to do to achieve those kind of capex, uh, uh, those kind of localization? Do you like to start with the recovery? Sandeep speaking, I just pick up the first question of yours with regards to the, uh, how do you say the contribution economic, margin? The, yeah, on the contribution margin and the recovery of economics. I don't think that there is on a contractual basis a, a 
a difference between a pre BS6 or a post BS6. So we do have coverage for uh, raw material uh, recovery, indexing, etc. But what we have seen the last um, 12 to 18 months is a rather disproportionate increases in the cost uh, driven by logistics costs, wages costs, energy costs, semiconductor related costs. Um, so that is putting a lot of distress on the on the on the cost part of it. While we are also discussing with customers regarding this additional recovery. So I don't I don't see it as a, a contractual issue, but rather a disproportionate uh, circumstances we are passing through. Uh, just a follow up, you know, what is the extent of that additional cost, uh, which is still yet to be recovered? I mean, the reason why I'm asking is if I look at the end OE space, you talk about CV, passenger vehicles, two wheelers across the board. These are reporting one of the best contribution margins, you know, and the commentary is for the on an improving trajectory. But when I look at uh, a player like us, you know, who offer a very strong technology oriented product, uh, the same is not yet reflected in in terms of the recovery part? I think the extent of exposure, of course, depends on category to category, domain to domain. So there is really no, no one number which represents that. Uh, of course, you are right that uh, on a, uh, if we consider a vehicle manufacturer, possibly he has a lot more avenues and ways and means of uh, recovering cost impacts from the market compared to a tier one supplier like us. Uh, so that's a continuous challenge. Uh, so we will be faced with this also the coming uh, coming quarters. Uh, and then we will we will see how to navigate our position in the market. On CapEx? So I, yes, then I would go uh, for the uh, CapEx and uh, the CapEx, which is planned for the year 24. I think the, you were referring to the next year to look a little bit into the future, um, which we are at 3.5, 3.6 billion. This is mainly in the, in our plants. And this is really, if we look into the localization, this is supporting our further localization strategy. Um, if we go into the uh, common rail, into the exhaust gas treatment. This is where we now set up the plants uh, for the future. So more or less we have uh, partially, of course, uh, we have to uh, uh, partially invest also further in our buildings, but the main part will go into the machinery in all of our production plants. So, so the question was to achieve, say, the localization of, I mean, over a period of time, 90, 95%. Uh, what kind of a capex that would entail? You know, uh, just trying to understand the intensity in in terms of spend it will require. So, to to reach a 90 to 95%, this is really midterm, and therefore we cannot give you now here the guiding figure for this. And um, what we are looking is into the midterm planning, and this is our planning, how we would like to go ahead with the localization. But uh, which figure I can give you today so, or for the next year, what we have planned and agreed to invest in CapEx. And any thoughts on the surplus cash? I mean, post this sale of business, uh, it will just add to the overall cash balance. And the CapEx figure, which you're talking about, even after that, the cash accrue, uh, on the balance sheet, and it will just keep on building up further. So, yeah. any thoughts on the surplus cash? You know, what do we want to do with it? Yeah. So, um, as you rightly said, we have a quite good liquidity position, and um, what we are ongoing looking at is, of course, uh, besides the organic growth and the investment we make into the organic growth, we also look strategically now in the midterm planning. Uh, into an inorganic growth. Um, nevertheless, we have also to see that we have a transfer in the technology currently, plus to have a look how is the market moving uh, in the direction of electrification and hydrogen. So, therefore, we observe the market. We know that we have a very good uh, cash position. Be assured that we would like to place 
uh, the right thing in the market for the company. So just to reassure you that uh, there is a lot of internal focus on uh, uh, better utilization of cash and uh, putting that to more uh, productive use. We are looking into that uh, seriously. Uh, as and when we finalize the plans, we'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you and good luck. Thanks, Viraj. Next is uh, Mr. Sindhil. Please unmute and ask your question. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, just uh, one question. Uh, recently in the ICMA 2023, uh, Bosch has showcased a uh, lot of uh, uh, recent innovations or products on the two-wheeler side, uh, like integrated powertrain, radars, and uh, stability control devices. So, uh, what could be the relevance of those products with respect to Indian market? And uh, what's the potential over the medium term? So, that's my question. Thanks. I think part of the technology what we showed uh, showcased in ICMA, uh, we are investigating the use case relevance uh, into India as well. Um, so, there are uh, certain topics on, on powertrain, uh, certain topics on electrification and also on uh, on the on the display units uh, which uh, would be of relevance to india and we'll follow them up with uh, uh, demonstrators proof of concepts etc for india um, not all what we showed in icma would have direct use case relevance but we are checking uh, which of those would uh, bring value and also create traction in the market we'll keep you informed about it so typically there is a lag uh, between what's seen at Agma to what uh, gets into the markets in India, even in uh, premium bikes. So expect uh, that uh, delay, uh, typically three years uh, in most cases, and uh, only some relevant technologies, and also sometimes they're even further localized uh, for the needs of the Indian market and then brought in. So that work is on. Uh, we are talking to Indian OEMs about this. Thanks, Thanks. Uh, Next is Mr. Ravi Prohit. Please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, we could hear you. Ask your question. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, sir, you know, going back to the question on margins, uh, I know I think a couple of years back we had shared more than 20-25% of our workforce, right? Uh, we have taken various uh, cost initiatives uh, and yet after the end of uh, that two-year period, right after all those cost initiatives and everything else, um, uh, the, the RM costs have also come off, logistic costs have also come off. Uh, if we had not taken those steps, our margins would probably be like low single digits today uh, on the operating level, which has never happened in our history in Bosch. Um, it's 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 very very uh, you know confounding to investors whether is there a problem in in our own uh, uh, is there a problem with our uh, strength with our competitors or sorry with our OEMs and which has reduced over a period of time or whether we are uh, we have to pay more to the parent or the associate companies from whom we are importing more on you know transfer pricing because you know, somewhere there is there is a lot of margin that has got lost during this period and uh, we we can't seem to kind of you know understand and in the last two three years we've also not been able to communicate as to what is the normalized margin that investors or you know should hope to even on a medium term basis right uh, each time we have on these calls discussions. Oh. Yeah. Up, uh, yeah. Okay. I take it up, and then perhaps you can yeah. you can add. Um, so um, I think these uh, initiatives on the personal cost side were the absolute right ones. And uh, if you look to the, today at our position, we are in the current quarter in the in the personal cost at uh, eight point one percent of the revenues, which which is a quite healthy number. If you look at the other expenses. With the uh, cost contribution we made and uh, together now also with the uh, uh, selling of the new business, we are back at about 13, 13.2% of the revenues, which is also back on a healthy. 
So if we are looking at the PNL and if we are looking at the revenues, we see two, we see one uh, thing and these are the material costs. Knowing that we are coming from BS4 to a BS6 now, and yes, we have increased our portion of imported goods, of traded goods, um, which we are on the midterm now coming into the next localization wave, let's say. This is what I explained beforehand in the common rail, where we have to, uh, to come up to a decent percentage of localization. And in addition, it is especially in the exhaust gas treatment where we have planned already which products we would like to localize here in India, and we are now going ahead to uh, make these plannings on the midterm basis. Now, I just want to give a general perspective that every time there is a technology transition, be it from uh, BS3 uh, to 4, uh, BS4 to 6 now, or another uh, technology standard coming in, there is a dip in the localization uh, effort. And then over a period of time uh, when the technology is maturing, we increase our localization extent uh, and then uh, reach a very healthy localization uh, content. This is something that's been the practice even in the past, and that's the same trend that's happening uh, today. Uh, there are now increased uh, efforts uh, to uh, get higher levels of localization done at a faster pace. That action is already ongoing. But uh, some of the other effects you see today, which are rather new, are uh, the increases in uh, material costs, increases in many other factors that have come in, uh, which uh, to a large extent will need to be passed back to the OEMs and then recovered, and that action is also on. So overall, I think we should be back on a healthy path soon. Yeah, so, you know, if I could just extend that further, when we say healthy path and when we say medium term, are we talking of going back to our erstwhile range of margins? Uh, is that something that we should work with? Because, you know, uh, we used to make 18% margins EBITDA level in the past. We used to make 45% gross margins in the past. Uh, we are at 33% right now. So there is a huge uh, gap between then and now. So when we say over a medium term we are working, are we, can you, assure investors or at least give some path to investors to say that, you know, uh, this 33 will go back to the historic band or it's not going to happen, which effectively would mean that there is something structural that has come down in our business or in the, you know, overall operations. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to give you uh, an outlook for the future like this. Uh, we are working, all I can reassure you is we are seriously working on multiple uh, elements, and uh, you will start to see the improvements uh, over the coming uh... Okay. So for the last one, one and a half year, we've also mentioned uh, uh, a focus uh, on exports, right? Growing our exports. We had mentioned them in our annual report. We had mentioned them at various platforms in the last one and a half year. And we had said that we had fairly large ambition on export, right? Taking the export as a percentage of total revenue to mid-teens. Uh, so far, we've not seen much happening on that. Can you kind of share some insight into what is happening on the export size? Is it really a sizable of Opportunity. Is there any serious thing that is happening uh, at the company table on, on export side? Yeah. So um, if you look at the current situation of the exports and if you look at the global, at the global economical situation, and as Guru mentioned beforehand, we see the weak European market. We see a weak U.S. market. We know that China is struggling with the growth rates. And uh, I would say we are in a sweeter spot here in India. And this is what we also see. We see negative growth uh, in all these uh, uh, areas, especially in the Eastern Europe. We see Germany very, very slow. So, therefore, we also see, even if in our current low share of exports, we see, saw in this quarter a negative trend in the injectors for the passenger cars, which we usually deliver to Europe, we saw a negative trend. So, therefore, is export a chance? Then I would say, 
In generally, yes. But as long as all other markets are fighting like hell, what they currently do, this is, of course, then not the big chance for us to deliver in any way weak market with overcapacities. Okay. And, and Karen, just to clarify, when you mentioned midterm planning, are we, when we say midterm, are we talking of one or two years or are we talking about like more than four to five years? No, oh, we are talking to four to five years. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks, Ravi Prahit. <clears throat> Next is uh, Mr. Priyaranjan. Priyaranjan, you can unmute and ask your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in terms of technology uh, roadmap, can I, I think uh, the MDS okay the, in the one of the slides that the hydrogen ice, the, uh, the preparation and the trial run, etc. So in terms of the our uh, the technology roadmap as well as priority in terms of the new technology, where are uh, our uh, major foods uh, right now? Our focus is on that front and uh, in terms of R, is hydrogen ice is much bigger priority than going to uh, probably the electrification? If you can just throw some light on. No, I would say that uh, uh, we prioritize one over the other. Both are in very different uh, segments and both have different uh, needs in each of these segments. Currently, we see uh, hydrogen ice as an upcoming technology uh, which will be deployed uh, beyond 26 onwards towards 26 to 2030 and we are preparing ourselves towards that. Electrification is there in pockets in different segments already today but uh, will not be a dominant one in heavy commercial vehicles so we have uh, hydrogen ice in those areas uh, and electrification is a dominant technology for the future in uh, two wheelers, three wheelers and passenger cars and we are also working and uh, preparing ourselves for that. So. These are two different categories and uh, no, no need also for us to internally prioritize on any of them. We are working on all of that. Okay, good. Good to hear that. And so uh, to achieve all this technology, so uh, uh, one of the participants was earlier mentioning about the CapEx. So one, I mean, so far the CapEx is more towards, driven towards localization and the machineries and all. So when we look at the uh, these technologies, do we require, really require to step up the significant jump in the CapEx going forward? As you also mentioned that we are uh, uh, evaluating how to best use, put use to the cash, which we have in the balance sheet. So I mean, if you can so, throw some light in terms of the directionally, in terms of CapEx, so is it going to significantly increase? Because you will have a new technology will keep coming in then. See, what has been showcased is the CapEx uh, plan for 2024. Of course, uh, uh, for other uh, uh, technologies that we introduce uh, and also get into localization and manufacturing, like electrification or uh, hydrogen or other uh, things which come in the future, there will be more CapEx required. That's clear. And we are looking into that. And as and when... Uh, we have further updates on that. Uh, we'll certainly get back and uh, update you. Sure. And in terms of, uh, lastly, on in terms of the overall technology, not only on the powertrain side, but also on the on the vehicle side, like say the new technology or the new uh, smart uh, vehicle system, etc. Uh, like we have the uh, the camera based uh, uh, viewing system, etc. So. What is the kind of thought in terms of BOSS India? I mean, uh, because we have th this technology globally, but I don't think we have a meaningful presence in India for all these technologies. So if you can help us understand, are we looking to bring those technology? Because the technology gap uh, gradually is going down. I mean, uh, between, say, the developed market and the developing countries like India. So, I mean, the, the technology earlier, the gap between technology was probably a decade. Now it's shrinking to, say, two, three years. And uh, maybe with the smart vehicles and all, it will be uh, even lesser than that. So. so, let me start and I'll let uh, my colleague Sandeep uh, answer after that. 
Uh, see, in terms of uh, technology, we uh, have a global portfolio of uh, these uh, products and technologies which are offered to Indian OEMs. We, of course, also do Indianization of these uh, technologies as and when required and offer them to that uh, to the OEMs. Uh, what you brought in as examples may not necessarily be in the portfolio of Bosch Limited, and then uh, it doesn't matter whether that's uh, uh, required or not. But in any case, whatever we have as a general rule, whatever we have as technology globally is available for Indian OEMs. And further customization of that or even local development or lo local variant uh, development for Indian OEMs is always done in India and offered to the OEMs. Do you want to add anything? Well, I think you have covered most of it. Uh, so, um, while, uh, while these portfolio may necessarily not be within the Bosch Limited portfolio, but on a bigger mobility scale, uh, of course, there are there are technologies which is getting adapted, like you mentioned. So this could be in the area of drive assist or parking assist or automatic emergency braking or driver monitoring. These are things which uh, which are being worked. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Vairanjan. Due to time constraint, we'll take the last question from Basudev. Please unmute and ask your question, Basudev. Firstly, we could not hear you. I think he is. Uh, can you go to the next question, sir, or we want to close, sir? Last question. No, we can take one last question and close. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, we'll take the last question from Mr. Rajesh. Please unmute and ask your question. My questions regarding the exports and uh, margins were exhaustively discussed with previous uh, um, uh, participants. Uh, I wanted to clarify that and on EGT two things though um, from your answers. Regarding EGT, um, from your answer, am I to understand that uh, as and when EGT is localized, it would be part of uh, the listed entity in terms of its uh, sales and margins and not be a traded good? Yes, Look. you are right. Oh, that's good. That, yeah. that's, okay, because that there was some uh, uncertainty about it earlier, so thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, and, so, uh, yeah. yeah. so, so um, we are currently importing from uh, Bosch Group companies. We are importing and we have it as traded good according to the transfer price agreements based on arm's length, of course. And if we are localized, we localize in the listed company, and therefore uh, we have then also the benefit in the listed company of localization. Yes, you are right. Okay, thank you. And uh, the second question was related to uh, the answer. You know, when we import for traded goods, we have a, a contract due to transfer price, if it's internally or if it's externally, we have a procurement price. Um, and then, you know, Therefore, this gap that we have in our inability to pass on costs, it's not just about, um, you know, the competitive environment here. It's about, it's a two-way agreement, right? We're buying from somebody, we're selling to somebody, we're just a trader. So if at all there is a gap in maintaining our margins, it should be temporary in nature. Uh, is that right? Or... Um, have we made a mistake in the contract and somehow we are not able to, uh, uh, that we have agreed for price increases on our buying side, but somehow not pencil that in, in our selling? No, if we, if you import today, um, then of course you buy something, you trade it and you sell it. Uh, localization uh, is then that we, uh, first of all, uh, localize the value at part where we here in India, of course, in the value at uh, competitive, highly competitive, cost competitive. And in addition, 
as the second step is then, uh, as uh, I explained in one of our meetings before, that we usually start with the assembly, and then we start, we go ahead with the child parts, we start the localization of the supplier, and this is all part of the whole story that we try to localize as much as possible value add plus material here in India because on the long run, this is how we maintain our margins. Yeah. Chancellor, Chancellor, maybe I didn't explain the question clearly. What I meant was currently we are having a gap in uh, passing on the cost of traded goods, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clarify that it's purely a timing gap that uh, um, in the forthcoming quarters, it, the contracts get automatically adjusted. No. Or is it that we made a mistake in the contract and somehow some of these cost increases cannot be passed on? No, as actually, traded goods. Yeah. So actually, for the for the traded goods, uh, for the pricing issue and recovery of certain things, my 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 colleague answered already. What we mean is, if we talk about the change in the product mix, the, if I look at, if my, all my products are 100%, that we see an increase in the portfolio which is traded. And the only way to balance it is that we go ahead strong in the localization. So just to, uh, answer uh, quickly and close this. We do not have issues with contracts yeah. and uh, we do not have any uh, such uh, things. Uh, costs will be passed on and recoveries will happen, but there are processes behind it. And OEMs also ask for a lot of uh, clarifications, justifications and so on. And this is work in progress today. And uh, uh, the real cure for this uh, issue is having much higher localization effort than what we have today. And that is the effort we are putting in. Con contractual passing on, of course, will happen and recoveries will happen as uh, uh, the contracts. And there is no issue with that. Thank you so much. That's so clear. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rajesh. Uh, on behalf of BMT Security, we thank all participants for joining the call. And thanks to boss management for, for taking time out for the call and giving us the opportunity to host the call. Have a good day. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Bye-bye.